Often called one of the greatest feats of human engineering, the Panama Canal is a 77 kilometre long man-made stretch of water that was created to make shipping and travel easier. Before, to get from one ocean to the other, ships had to sail all the way around Cape Horn, an extra 8,000 nautical miles. So in 1881, some French engineers who had just built the hugely successful Suez Canal, which connects the Indian Ocean to the Mediterranean Sea, decided they'd have a crack at building one across Panama. Now, the tricky thing about crossing land masses with boats is that boats are kind of stuck to the body of water that they're floating on, and water always tries to flow down towards sea level. Now, the Suez Canal engineers solved that problem by simply digging a channel through the land at sea level, allowing seawater to flow freely through it. Unfortunately, Panama's mountainous terrain was quite different to Egypt's and required a ton more costly digging than the French engineers ever anticipated. Also, their design would have run into even more problems because, as it turns out, the Pacific Ocean sea level is 20 centimetres higher than that on the Atlantic, which would have created hella tricky currents going through the canal. And if that wasn't bad enough for the French engineers, tropical diseases like yellow fever spread through their workforce because, well, they didn't have the vaccines for them yet. And in the end, they had to abandon the project at an enormous cost. However, the potential payoff of having a canal through Central America was just too huge, so the US resumed the project a few decades later. Their design was a bit different. Instead of cutting down to sea level, they figured it made more sense to take the boats up and over the land somehow. To do this, they built a dam across the Chagres River to create a huge man-made lake that would cover a large part of the land and make up most of the waterway that the ships could travel across. Each lock has huge gates at either end, which holds the lake water back. After a ship enters, water is allowed in until the levels on each side of the gate are equal height, which lifts the ship up in the process. Then the gates can open and the ship moves on to the next step. The largest of the gates are almost eight meters high and over two meters thick. And it's very important that they're strong because if they fail, well, it would create a catastrophic flood of water downstream. And well, no one wants that. Look at the size of this boat. This is what's called a Panamax, pretty much the largest boat that can fit through the canal. And well, it's enormous. So what's just happened is it was in the first lock, the water drained out of that one, filled up the other one until they were equal, then the gates opened, and now the boat is moving through. And then it carries on through the next gate, and then it's back out to the sea. Since it opened just over 100 years ago, the Panama Canal has become one of the busiest waterways in the world, with over 14,000 ships passing through it each year. And in 2015 alone, over 340 million tons of goods passed through it, which accounted for 6% of the whole world's total trade. And it certainly makes the country of Panama very happy, as it brings in around $2 billion a year in revenue for their treasury. So, if you factor in all those stats, it's no wonder the Panama Canal is considered one of the seven wonders of the modern world. Oh.